In this video, you'll be shown what you can expect to see while interacting with Okta two-step verification after you've enrolled. If you have yet to enroll, you'll want to do that first before continuing with this video. To enroll, visit it.tcu.edu slash Okta. Throughout the video, you may hear the terms two-step or two-factor verification or authentication. Each can be used interchangeably, but what do they mean? Many of the resources you currently access require the use of your TCU username and password in order to help protect your accounts and keep them secure. A password is one step to keep you safe. Two-factor or two-step verification is just a second way to authenticate that you're you, in addition to your password. So let's take a look at what you'll actually see when using two-factor authentication. When you try to log in somewhere that uses two-factor verification, it will look similar to this. It is important to note that different websites and resources may have different security requirements, so you may see different options depending on what you're accessing or even based on your location and whether you are logging in from on-campus or off-campus. Let's take a look at our options for authentication. You will have three different ways to authenticate, and we'll go over each of them one at a time. The first authentication option we'll look at is Send Push. For this option, you will need to have the OctaVerify app installed. When you click Send Push, this will cause a notification to pop up on the device you're using to authenticate. In my case, I'm using an iPhone. The notification pops up on my phone screen as a banner, and I can either drag down and select Yes, It's Me, or I can tap on the notification which will bring me into the OctaVerify app where I can select the Yes, It's Me option. Once you select the Yes, It's Me option, the resource you are trying to log into will automatically log in within a few seconds. If you happen to be wearing an Apple Watch, you can also receive the push notification there as well as select the same Yes It's Me option. The next option we'll look at is Enter Code. This option also requires the use of the OctaVerify app. It's important to note that the OctaVerify app can only be downloaded to one device, so it is important to use a device that you're likely to have with you. When you click the option to enter a code, a box for you to type the code in will populate. To find the code, open the OctaVerify app and type in the code displayed. This code will change every 30 seconds. After typing in the code, click on Verify. Once again, the page will automatically log in. The last option we'll look at is SMS authentication. This is the only option that does not require the OctaVerify app, but it does require a device that receives text messages. For this option, you'll click on the drop-down arrow. One quick note here, from the drop-down menu, you'll also see an option that says OctaVerify. If you click it, it will just show you the two options discussed previously. So from the drop-down menu, you'll select SMS authentication. You'll then see an option for send code. Once you click send code, you'll receive a text containing a code. You'll then enter the code and click verify. The page will then log you in. Let's go back to the main menu one more time. You may have noticed a checkbox option to send push automatically. If you check this option, send push will become your default option for authentication and you will forego the option to enter a code or receive a text. This can be changed in your settings. We've now looked through all three options for authentication, send push, enter code, or SMS authentication. You can use any option you prefer, just remember to have your iOS or Android mobile device available. Thanks for watching.